And joining us once again to answer your Facebook questions is Lieutenant Governor and the state's COVID-19 liaison, Dr. Josh Green. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. All right, our first question is from Elma Aldrich. She wants to know, what is the goal with the stay-at-home, safer-at-home orders? I thought it was to flatten the curve, which has been done, but now everything gets, keeps getting extended. We know it's not going away, so what is the defined goal? Uh, the, the defined goal was definitely to decrease spread and prevent fatalities, which was achieved. Achieved through the extreme hard work of our people and the sacrifice that people have made. I definitely think that the, the stay-at-home order should be relaxed come June 1st. And the real purpose of the, the updated order is to get some clarity on travel between the islands and ultimately travel to the state. We do need a little bit of a clearer picture. A lot of words get bounced around and confused, and that's why it was a little bit disconcerting that uh, the mayor weighed into the governor's space. Not that he's not a good person or whatever, just that there's just too many cooks in the kitchen sometimes and everyone gets confused. But I hope that we get real serious clarity from the gov and we also know which businesses can open with about 10 days notice instead of less because it takes a bit of work. Is that something that the governor and the mayor should abide by the governor and leave it up to the governor to say when it's opening? Yes, that is the right way to go about it. Uh, the mayors have an incredible amount of additional hard work to do. I mean, they really do most of law enforcement. And as we know, that's very important because you've got a bunch of um, individuals that come into the state, sometimes in numbers that we don't even appreciate right now. And we need to bust those guys if they're defying the, the quarantine order. So there's simply too much work to go around for people to be getting in other people's lanes. All right, Susan Talon wants to know, there are a thousand visitors that came to Hawaii on Saturday. What actions are we taking to make sure that these visitors are being quarantined for 14 days? If we don't have a plan, we will lose the trend in our numbers. Uh, she's right. We, we would lose ground if we had a surge of people coming into the state that were asymptomatic carriers of the disease. So even this morning, I was on the phone with leadership at the airports who are just terrific, actually. And they have beefed up the, uh, the tracking quite significantly. But to be honest, the biggest addition is going to be in advance of when we allow real tourism to open. Uh, we are way down. We, we used to see 30,000 people a day. I'll have to check that number. That 1,000 number seems very high to me. It's been closer to 200, but I'll definitely check that. We're going to have to uh, actually find out exactly where people check in and follow up. Otherwise... Uh, there's no way, uh, no way we can sustain this kind of numbers without some testing. What do you think about the inner island 14-day quarantine? Because if our numbers throughout the state are low and the viral load is low, should that be eased a bit? Yeah, I would recommend actually that we, uh, that we completely get rid of the 14-day quarantine for inner island travel for our local residents. I would not get rid of it for anyone who's traveled here. And Keep in mind that there are some flights that do fly into Kona and Maui right now still. I think it's on Delta. And so, though the numbers are very small going in there, as you know, we don't want people bouncing around into the neighbor islands and then, uh, and then giving a small surge uh, kind of a foothold. So I think for Kama Aina, I mean, well, actually just for local residents, totally, we don't need it any longer. We do need buy-in from the mayors. Again, we were looking at... Uh, closely at Memorial Day weekend, so stay tuned. Things could change quite quickly on that front. All right, and final question from Ivan Gibson. When will hair and nail salons, barber shops, and tattoo shops be allowed to open? And how much notice will be given so we can be prepared for the new safety guidelines? My preference would be for anything we decide, uh, we give people at least five days notice. So that would mean announcements by a Wednesday for something that would follow uh, the next week, Monday. Mm -hmm. June 1st looks quite sensible to me. It's the beginning of a month. It's a Monday. It's after the Memorial Day weekend. We will have had uh, well more than the two-week virus cycle to see that we didn't have any extra surge. So keep your fingers crossed for June 1st, and that's what I'll be pressing for. And where does, I got to ask, because I'm a CrossFit fan. I miss my CrossFit 808 Ohana. When will CrossFit gyms, what are they considered, medium risk, high risk, and when could you see them opening up? I think they fall into the medium risk area. And for CrossFit and whatnot, I think just you know, keep in mind that we'll want to make sure that people have at least six feet between one another. 
we'll have to be very rigorous about our cleaning of, of the machines afterwards. And, and people are very responsible. So I'm a big fan of the CrossFit community. I think that people are taking their health into consideration in advance are saving us a lot of uh, suffering on the back end. So good for everybody who's taking that much uh, care for themselves. All right, Lieutenant Governor Josh Green, we appreciate your time and for providing all of viewers with the great information as always.